Dr. Rachel Morley from the School of Humanities and Communication Arts. And Rachel's topic is aging creatively, creative writing as a tool for healthy aging. My apologies and welcome, Rachel. I would have been okay to take a tea break, that would have been fine, but here we are. <laughs> okay, I'd like to introduce you to Carol. Carol is 83 years old and she lives at an aged care centre not far from here. Her husband died a few years ago. Lately, Carol started to feel lonely. She thinks she might be depressed. She's starting to, to, to miss her old life and to feel like she isn't the person she used to be. And she feels like she's wanting to withdraw from the outside world. Some of you might know a Carol. Hers is an everyday story about a growing group of Australians who are leading longer, but not necessarily happier lives. As it stands, older people living in aged care are five times more likely to experience anxiety and depression than those living in the community. And often it's because of isolation and loneliness. And those feelings aren't just difficult to bear. They're also um, high risk factors for other conditions, such as high blood pressure, obesity, um, reduced, um, reduced, reduced mortality and early nursing home admission. And they come at a substantial and financial cost for individuals and also for families and for the healthcare sector in Australia and around the world. Now the story of impact that I want to tell is how I've been using creative writing as a therapeutic tool for helping and encouraging people like Carol to break the cycle of isolation and to participate in creative communities as part of a long-term strategy that can promote healthy ageing. The project is still in its infancy. We've only conducted two short pilots at this stage, but it's already enabling us to build strategic relationships with aged care providers, the university, and also older writers. We've chosen creative writing as our main tool of intervention because it presents a unique opportunity for self-expression and meaning making, and because there is also considerable evidence that demonstrates the way it can help people work through adversity and also encourages problem solving and imaginative exploration. Our aim then is to develop a program of user-tested, purpose-designed curricula, guidelines and techniques that will help people who are in aged care centres to be able to combat isolation and forge community connections, thereby breaking through the problems of, of, of isolation and also through cognitive function. We want to improve people's well-being. We also want to develop a networked um, set of resources that will enable writers to share their work and build local, regional and, and international communities of, of writing practitioners. And this is going to be a first in aged care. So what have we done so far? In 2015 and 2016, we ran two pilots and what we wanted to find out was what are the best um, resources that we need to bring people into the creative writing workshop group but also that helps them maintain their participation. We tested two main techniques and the first was a technique that uses um, autobiographical methodologies which have often been used in aged care. We often think that older people want to work with memory. But we also tested a technique that uses experimental approaches, which is drawn from a surrealist practice. And this introduced new and innovative techniques for our writers. And what we found was that while the writers very much enjoyed the autobiographical techniques, it was the experimental exercises that led to new ways of thinking. Now this is important because when somebody is feeling like they're, um, they're beginning to get, to be get lonely and isolated, they need to think about innovative ways to pull themselves out of it. And it was also through the new ways of thinking and new techniques that what we found as well was that it led to new experiences of mastery and skills development, and this was really important. What we found overall was a 100% improved feeling of belonging, connectedness, and mastery. Now, some of the outputs that we, we produced through this project was an anthology, you can see that on the right called Handpicked, and that's where all the writers came together and they collaborated. 
we also had a festival of readings where writers came together and shared work and they felt really, really good about that. And that gave us a really good model for how we might move forward in the next stage of our work. We've also now developed really fantastic partnerships with four main aged care centres, Opal, Baptist Care, The Widden Group and Carrington, and they're helping us to develop a website which will enable participants to again share their work with each other, and importantly to produce a model that will enable people to share the work with arts facilitators and also other aged care providers. And the impact of this work is that it means that not only are the aged care participants themselves beginning to recover their own sense of identity and also of their own mastering capacity, but it's enabling the aged care providers themselves to be able to find new ways of engaging with their groups and to set up new policy arrangements for the way that they deal with the aged care sector. Thank you. A uh, question for Rachel from the panel. Pino. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Amazing presentation. The, the issue for me, and I wouldn't mind your comments, mm. is that your medium is writing. Um, and with that aged care cohort, you had a major issue in terms of first language literacy, yes. uh, physical capacity, uh, languages other than English. H have you considered how that method would actually need to change to accommodate differences in the aged care cohort? Yes, no, certainly. So that'll be the next stage of our pilot will be to look at those issues. We recognise that creative writing is very much a kind of a niche activity. And so what we see is that it will bring in... Um, bring in people who have already kind of inclined to want to do a writing practice, but we see that the impact of that will spread out to then um, inform other creative practices. In terms of first language and some of the difficulties that some writers might experience, particularly with cognitive decline as well, the next stage of the research again will begin to develop some techniques so that we're able to ensure that the project is um, meeting those people's needs and has best practice procedures for people who go on to uh, deliver the project down into the future as well. Thank you.